What's up glue sniffers? Here we are with the last step of my Shelf Queen Rescue project. The T34 is done, the figures are painted and both videos are already on my channel. So today we will finish the scene. I built and primed this 5 years ago and considering my skills at the time it turned out quite well. But there is always room for improvement, so let's dig into it. The remains of the floor looks cool, but the cracks seem a bit cartoonish to me. I quickly made it more realistic with a hobby blade. I added some nails to ensure the bond and I put it in place with some Paul Eventuno Dance CA. The place is missing some rubble and we will quickly make some. I made the shape of the pile out of styrofoam and glued it in place with some PVA. The shape is there, but the pile is smaller because we will add volume now. I started with some big balsa leftovers for wood. Just make some holes in the pile and put them in place with PVA. Then I covered the entire pile with PVA. Try not to hit the wood. Big stones from cut litter were the next, followed by some plaster bricks. The trick is to use as many house building elements as possible. Time to go smaller. Small cat litter stones were used to fill the empty space. You can simply arrange it with a dry brush. I decided to fix the rubble into stages, so here is the first. A spray of tension breaker and a generous amount of my cine glue. When it was dry I added even more junk. Some destroyed pipes, some metal sheets from who knows where, and some smaller pieces of wood. Tin CA was used for gluing. Then I filled the empty space with some fine sand. A piece of advice. Keep the bricks and the wood clean so they will be easier to paint later. The window shelf was looking a bit empty, so I quickly filled it. After some even finer sand and some arranging, it was time to fix the rubble for good. The process was the same as before. I quickly prepared some glass for the windows from clear plastic. They will be glued later. Also the street light needed some attention. I made a bracket out of a styrene sheet and glued some bolts in place. All those details for a more realistic look. So, the upgrades are finished and I will take a second to say thank you to my amazing Patreon team. Just check out the page if you want to become a part of our scale modeling community. And you will get a lot for a small amount of money. The first 7 days are free, so you can get a free tour. Speaking of upgrades, let's take a look at our rubber pile. Everything is perfectly glued and looks nice and crispy. It's time for some paint. First, we need to paint all the upgrades black. The surfaces were small, so I used black paint instead of primer. In this project, I decided to use glazes or filters applied by brush over a pre-shaded surface. So, I started pre-shading with some deck tan from Tamiya. As you can see, the paint was very thin. I first gave it an overall coat, avoiding the strongest shadows. Then I started to bring out single elements by building up the color. For the final step I took white, again from Tamiya. Here I was addressing the most exposed areas. In the end the scene should look like a black and white photo. All the elements are there, but the colors are missing. The airbrush goes in the drawer and it will be brushwork from now on. I started with the sidewalk tiles. I took a nice warm grey color and applied it as a glaze. Most of the painting from now on will be about just altering the previous step and not covering it completely. The paint was graphite AK 3rd gen. The shade is perfect for all kind of stone painting and the paint works like a champ. Here you go with my definition of a glaze. One part paint and six to eight parts water. The mix can of course change from paint to paint, but you have a starting point. Here I am doing the second coat, and as it turned out, I was mostly doing two coats for everything. The base painting of the tiles is done. They have a color now, but the pre-shading is still visible. That's the whole point. 
After the base painting, we have the altering step, because all those tiles would look boring in the same color. We are again using glazes, and the number of coats depends on the desired effect and the painting. But we are still talking about one or two applications. The choice of colors is up to you, and depends on what you want to get. For stonework, you can't go wrong with brown, grey and beige. I used burnt umber, light matte, deck 10 and old wood. And the result speaks for itself. Also the cobblestone was base coated in graphite but with a nice white flat brush. Same base coat as for the tiles, but for the variations I was playing more in the grey department. So dark grey, neutral grey, London grey, blue grey pale, and some green-grey for the end. But hey, the dark cobbles are missing and this looks super boring. My bad. I did them, but then I was thinking that they were shooting too much and I turned them off. And here is the beauty of those glazes. You can fix things and change them in no time. I redid the dark cobbles and added some dark brown for good measure. Now we are talking. So, German Camo Black Brown was added to the palette, and here is the result. Ok, the 50 shades of grey part is over. Time for some life with those Koto tiles on the inside. This rust shade from Life Color is perfect for this task. One coat to get the tiles wet, another coat to reinforce the color, and some red and yellow are all you will need for variation. You know what? Let's do the thinning without counting the drops. A lot of water and you can't go wrong. This variation glazing step is just super easy and fun. All the tiles in this scene are flat, they have no texture whatsoever. I try to add texture by painting it. All you have to do is apply some very thin white stains to them. Later, I repeated this step with black paint and the texture came out even more, but unfortunately I didn't film the procedure. Same procedure, black paint and keep it very thin, even thinner as for the glazes. The rusty shade from life color turned out to be cool for the bricks too. And don't forget that we also have bricks in the rubber piles. I also used red and yellow for variation, but here a more extended palette of colors is a must. So I added sunny skin tone, deck tan and some burnt umber. With the bricks out of the way we can go for the walls. For the outer wall I chose blue. A bit of white was added to Prussian blue and here I was applying the second coat. The stonework on the wall looks quite good after pre-shading, so I just went with one coat of white to make it stand out. For the inside I went with this pale green, Italian tank crew highlight, nothing less. I bought it second hand at the motion show years ago without even knowing why. I just like the color and finally I can use it. I love this kind of stories. Time to make the walls more lived in. I'm talking about some shadows and some faded stains and scratches. For the interior I used white and dark brown to obtain the effect. And you guessed it, we will use the same two colors on the outside. I started with the shadows. The shadow areas should be wider under the edge of the elements and narrower on the upper edge of the elements. As you can see, the color is a glaze again, so you can control the effect easily. Now that the areas are established, we can reinforce the shadows in the corners to obtain some transition. For the faded part, I started adding more white to the base blue mix. I was highlighting the ruined edge and doing some chipping. I also did some random scratches here and there. This time the paint was a bit thicker. The next step was an even more pale blue color. Here we are talking about white with just a bit of blue in it. 
I repeated the step, but on a smaller area. And you can see that we are making progress. For the stonework, I used white to make some highlights. The warm parts were kind of stippled and the upper corners were highlighted. The rubber piles are the only part that is still missing some paint, except for the bricks of course. I started with the wood. Old wood was the base color and I coated all the elements. Then I picked up some of the planks and made some variations with deck ten. And now the torture starts. The idea was to do some dark wood grain with dark brown. And I did it, but every plank was standing under another angle and there was always something in the way. Things didn't change with the lighter wood grain. Next time I will definitely go for modular rubber piles that can be painted separately. I already have the idea, but we will talk about that in the future. The final step was some edge highlighting with deck 10. And the wood is finally out of the way. Thanks God. Now we will paint the rubble. I started with a burnt amber wash. I loaded the brush for good and I was just touching the piles that were absorbing the paint like sponges. Quick, clean and easy. The other steps were done with dry brushing. Here we are using a flat soft brush and the color should be straight out of the bottle. The color is green-grey and you can see that the rocks are getting some life. Let's go one step further. Dry brush it again, but on a smaller area and the color is deck 10. Ok, quite cool, huh? Dry brushing with a big brush is quick, but it can be messy, so I quickly repass the bricks with their base color. And what can we do to bring even more life to the rubble? Some variations, of course. Three colors are already on the table and I just added light matte and old wood. The paint should be slightly tinted, and you just pick some of the rocks and paint them. For the cherry on the cake, I took the two wall colors and made some wall debris. I was planning to do some cracks from the beginning, but I was looking for balls to try it. Well, here we go. I started to draw some white cracks with a super pale blue color. This will be the highlight of the cracks. And then I just mixed dark brown and black one to one and made the narrow dark cracks. What can I say? I tried, but this didn't turn out particularly well. Next time I will do real cracks and the painting will be easier. We will see. Ok, let's take a look. What is missing? Some grout of course. I was experimenting with a new approach on the inside. It is not great, but I will show it to you. You just need some wall repair stucco, a syringe and some water. The trick is to thin the stucco until it's barely running and you can suck it up with the syringe. Then you get rid of the air and you are good to go. I was barely applying any pressure. You have to go slow and it takes some time to get used to the process, but it has some potential. After some time, about 10 minutes in my case, you can start to sort of clean and blend the grout with a flat brush. I applied some stucco to the loose bricks to simulate some grout remains, but here it was used without thinning. It dries completely white, and this is not cool at all. There is an easy fix. I just turned it off with a black glaze or filter, but go with a ton of water. Sometimes we say that the paint should be like dirty water, well here you need even more water. Now we will go into some details, starting with the window. I applied a nice coat of deck tan as a base coat. I used dark brown for the shadows and white for some highlights. Let's glue some glasses in place. I used ultra glue from Cole Ventuno. This is a kind of PVA, but it dries completely transparent at the end, so it's perfect for this task. And now for some dirty work. All you have to do is mix some PVA glue with a lot of water. 
you apply some of this mix to the glasses and you drag it around while it's drying. It's hard to describe, but it's super easy. When it starts to set, you take a cotton swab and you clean the centers. You will end up with a nice semi-transparent filthy look. Now for the metal slash rusty stuff. I base painted all the metal elements with neutral grey. I will show you the other steps on the manhole cover, but the process was the same for all the pipes and metal stuff in the rubber piles. The next thing was a nice black wash for all the gaps. I used white to do some highlights and variations. And now comes the magic step. Enamel effects. First a nice overall coat of streaking rust and while it was still wet some stains of light rust wash both from Amo. I didn't know it at the time but those were the only two enamel paints on the entire scene. All the rest was done with acrylics. So the street light was base coated with the same paint I used for the inside wall. I made some big holes back in the day, don't ask me why, and I just went with my standard chipping procedure all over it. The window has been glued in place, and as you can see, I decided to change the position of the street light. Some dense CA from Cole Ventuno, and the last element is in place. And now comes the biggest transformation in the entire project. We will fill the cobblestone with fine sand. Try to use the finest one you can find. I just applied some and then I spread it around with a soft brush. The gaps should be filled and the cobblestone should be clean. Luckily the sand is dry, so you have all the time to arrange it. The same procedure was used for the sidewalk tiles. And yes, you should definitely first do the sidewalk, which is higher, and then push the excess onto the cobblestone, which is still empty, but hey. Why make it easy when you can complicate something? For fixing I used sand and gravel fixer from AK. It is the best medium for this process in my humble opinion, but there is a but, there is always a but. You should be 100% sure that there is no exposed styrofoam, because it will eat it. I almost ruined an entire scene with this, so trust me. Otherwise, it runs perfectly, fixes perfectly and will not leave any stains whatsoever. The beauty of this step is that we didn't only fill the gaps. There will be no need for additional dusting because the dust is already there. Oh hey, I had luck with the color of the sand because it's perfect. But as we say in our parts, luck follows the brave ones. All I had to do was apply a dark brown wash to simulate some humidity around the manhole cover and around the rubber piles on the street, which was followed by a light mud wash on the manhole cover and on the piles of rubber on the street. Some polished metal effect with a pencil on the cover and... ta -da! Enough is enough. A time came when you don't know what to do next, and in my case it's usually time to stop. What can I say? I'm mostly happy with the result, but there is something that is bothering me and I don't exactly know what or why. My club colleague said that my inner female part is talking. Anyway, I'm glad it's done and next time you will be watching a quick recap video with the final steps that will turn this scene into a diorama. Until then, stay healthy, stay cool and put some glue on the styrene too. Bye.